Brazil, officially the Federative Republic of Brazil, is the largest country in South America and Latin America, ranking fifth in the world by land area, covering 8,510,417 square kilometers. With a population of 203 million inhabitants as of August 2022, it is the seventh most populous country. Bordered by the Atlantic Ocean, Brazil has a coastline of 7,491 kilometers and shares borders with all South American countries except Chile and Ecuador. Additionally, it is home to several archipelagos, such as the Atoll das Rocas and Fernando de Narona. Discovered by the Portuguese on April 22, 1500, Brazil was a colony of the Portuguese Empire until its independence in 1822. Following periods of imperial and republican rule, the country endured authoritarian regimes until the return to democratic governance in 1985. As a medium regional power, Brazil enjoys international recognition and is classified as an emerging global power. Its economy ranks as the 12th largest in the world in nominal terms and is noted for being the largest coffee producer over the past 150 years. Despite its influence, Brazil faces challenges such as corruption, crime, and social inequality. It is a member of various international organizations, including the UN, G20, BRICS, CPLP, Latin Union, OAS, OEI, and Mercosur. The origins of the word Brazil are uncertain. Some suggest a Celtic influence, mentioning a land of delights among the clouds. Others, like João de Barros and Pero de Magalhães Gandevo, link the name to the Brazil wood used in fabric dyeing. During the Age of Discovery, the land had several designations, such as Monte Pascal, Ilha de Vera Cruz, and Terra de Santa Cruz. The inhabitants, known as Brazilians, initially referred to the traders of Brazil wood. Approximately 60,000 years ago, the first humans occupied Brazilian territory. By 1500, South America was home to about 2 million natives along the eastern coast. The indigenous population consisted of large nations, notably the Tupi Guarani, Macrojei, and Arawak. The Tupis, found from Rio Grande do Sul to Rio Grande do Norte, were the first to have contact with the colonizers in the region known as Pindorama. Before the arrival of Europeans, the borders between indigenous groups were marked by wars due to cultural differences. Leadership was earned over time rather than assigned by heredity. Indigenous slavery, unlike European slavery, reflected a unique socio-economic organization, with asymmetries expressed in kinship relations. Although Duarte Pacheco Pereira and Vicente Yanez Pinzon are believed to be the first Europeans to arrive in Brazil, the territory was claimed by Portugal on April 22, 1500, with the arrival of Pedro Álvarez Cabral at Porto Seguro, Bahia, due to the Treaty of Tordesilhas. Colonization began in 1534 with the division of the territory into hereditary captaincies, but by 1549, due to various issues, a governor-general was appointed to administer the colony. The Portuguese assimilated some native tribes, while others were enslaved or decimated by European diseases. In the 16th century, sugar became crucial, leading to the importation of African slaves to meet the growing demand. Ignoring the Treaty of Tordesilhas, the Portuguese expanded their colonial borders. The decline of sugar at the end of the 17th century was offset by the discovery of gold in the 1690s, sparking a gold rush that attracted settlers from various parts of the Portuguese world. To maintain control and suppress rebellions, colonial administration focused on eradicating forms of resistance, such as the Quilombo dos Palmares, and on quelling movements for autonomy, like the Inconfidencia Minaira. At the end of 1807, Spanish and Napoleonic threats led Prince Regent Dom João VI to transfer the royal court from Lisbon to Brazil. This move resulted in the emergence of Brazilian institutions, such as stock exchanges and a national bank, breaking Portugal's commercial monopoly over Brazil. In 1809, in response to the self-exile in Brazil, the Prince Regent ordered the conquest of French Guiana. After the Peninsular War in 1814, European pressures demanded the return of Maria I and Dom João to Portugal. To justify their continued presence in Brazil, in 1815, 
the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil, and the Algarves was established, forming a transatlantic monarchical state. However, in 1820, the liberal revolution of Porto and the demand for independence in Brazil, evidenced by the Pernambucana Revolution of 1817, made Dom João V.I.'s return to Lisbon inevitable in 1821. His son, Prince Pedro de Alcantara, took over as regent of the Kingdom of Brazil. In 1822, faced with the Portuguese crown's attempt to turn Brazil back into a colony, Brazilians, led by Dom Pedro, refused and proclaimed the independence of the United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil, and the Algarves on September 7. Pedro was crowned emperor on October 12, 1822, founding the Empire of Brazil. The War of Independence spread across the north, northeast, and south, culminating in the surrender of the last Portuguese troops in 1824. Independence was recognized by Portugal in 1825. The first constitution was granted in 1824, but after years of instability and Dom Pedro I's abdication in 1831, the country underwent a regency period until the premature coronation of Dom Pedro II in 1840. During the regency, rebellions such as Cabanagem and Sabaneda occurred due to provincial discontent. Dom Pedro II was declared emperor prematurely in 1840, and internal stability was restored by the end of the decade. Internationally, Brazil won wars in the southern cone during Dom Pedro II's reign. The issue of slavery persisted until its formal abolition in 1888, following international pressures and a long internal debate. In 1889, after years of political and economic instability, the monarchy was overthrown by a military coup on November 15. With the start of the Republican government in 1891, the constitution of the time provided for direct elections only in 1894, maintaining voting restrictions such as the lack of secrecy and limiting the vote to literate men. This initial period was marked by relative external stability until the Acre Question, 1899-1902, and participation in World War I, 1914-1918. Internally, the crisis of the Insilimento and the First Revolt of the Armada in 1891 initiated a prolonged cycle of financial, political, and social instability that lasted until the 1920s. Various civil and military rebellions plagued the country, leading to the Revolution of 1930, led by Gachulio Vargas, who assumed the presidency. Vargas, initially in a temporary role, closed Congress, governed under a state of emergency, and replaced governors with federal interventors. In 1932, an attempted revolution in Sao Paulo and, in 1935, the communist in Tentona were defeated. The communist threat served as a pretext for another coup in 1937, establishing the Estado Novo and consolidating the dictatorship. During World War II, Brazil initially remained neutral but broke with the Axis powers in 1942. After submarine attacks, it declared war in 1942 and sent troops to Europe in 1944. With the Allied victory in 1945, Vargas was deposed by a military coup, democracy was restored, and General Eurico Gaspar Dutra was elected president in 1946. Vargas returned democratically in 1950 but committed suicide in 1954 during a political crisis. Several provisional governments followed Vargas's suicide. In 1955, Juscelino Kubitschek took office as president, adopting a conciliatory stance and promoting economic growth, notably through the construction of Brasilia. His successor, Janio Quadrush, resigned in 1961, leading to João Goulart taking over. The coup of 1964 established a military dictatorship that was initially transitional but solidified with Institutional Act No. 5 in 1968. Repression, censorship, and persecution affected various social sectors and persisted for years. The economic miracle and Operation Condor marked this period of authoritarianism. Political opening began in the 1970s, culminating in the Amnesty Law of 1979 and the return to democracy in the 1980s. After the Doritas Ja movement in 1985, civilians returned to power, inaugurating the new republic. Tancredo Neves won the election, 
but his death led José Sarni to the presidency, which was marked by economic crises and hyperinflation. Culler took office in 1989 but was later impeached, paving the way for Itamar Franco. Fernando Enrique Cardoso stood out by implementing the real plan, bringing economic stability and being elected in 1994 and 1998. The transition to Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva in 2002 consolidated political stability. Dilma Rousseff succeeded Lula in 2010, facing protests and was deposed in 2016, leading to Michel Temer taking over. Jair Bolsonaro won in 2018, a term marked by the pandemic and criticisms of his management. In 2022, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva won the elections, facing political challenges and an extremist attack in Brasilia in 2023. Brazil, crossed by the imaginary lines of the equator in the Tropic of Capricorn, extends along the eastern coast of South America, sharing land borders with several South American countries. In addition to oceanic archipelagos like Fernando de Narona, the country is notable for its geographical diversity, being the fifth largest in the world with 8.5 million square kilometers, encompassing four time zones, from UTC-5 in Acre to UTC-2 in the Atlantic Islands. Brazil exhibits vast climatic diversity, predominantly tropical, with six climate subtypes according to the Köppen system, equatorial, tropical, semi-arid, tropical highland, temperate, and subtropical. This variety results in environments ranging from equatorial forests in the north to semi-arid regions in the northeast, as well as temperate forests in the south and tropical savannas in the central part of the country. Specific regions have distinct microclimates. Notably, the equatorial climate in the north has average temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius, while the semi-arid climate in the northeast features seasonal rainfall and long dry periods, marked by historical events such as the Great Drought of 1877-78, which resulted in significant human losses. Brazil's topography is diverse, including hills, mountains, plains, plateaus, and cerrado, with most areas ranging from 200 to 800 meters in elevation. The highland region occupies more than half of the southern part of the country, with the northwestern parts of the plateau featuring rolling terrain interrupted by low hills. The southeastern section is more robust, with mountain ranges and hills reaching altitudes of up to 1,200 meters, including the Espinhaco, Mantiquira, and Mar ranges. In the north, the Guiana Plateau separates rivers flowing into the Amazon basin from those that drain into the Orinoco River system in Venezuela. The highest point in Brazil is Pico de Neblina in the Serra do Imari, at 2,994 meters, while the lowest point is the Atlantic Ocean. Brazil has a complex river system, one of the largest in the world, with eight major watersheds draining into the Atlantic. The most important rivers include the Amazon, Piranha with its largest tributary, the Iguazu, home to the Iguazu Falls, Negro, São Francisco, Xingu, Madeira, and Tapajos. Brazil's territorial extent encompasses various ecosystems, such as the Amazon rainforest, recognized for having the highest biological diversity in the world. The Atlantic Forest, Cerrado, and Caatinga also contribute to the country's megadiversity. In the south, the Araucaria forests thrive in a temperate climate. Brazil's rich wildlife reflects the variety of natural habitats, with approximately 4 million species of plants and animals. Mammals such as pumas, jaguars, ocelots, bush dogs, foxes, tapirs, anteaters, sloths, possums, and armadillos can be found, as well as deer in the south and various species of platyrines in the northern tropical forests. However, the natural heritage faces serious threats due to livestock farming, agriculture, logging, mining, deforestation, extraction of natural resources, overfishing, wildlife trade, dams, water pollution, fires, invasive species, and global warming. In 2016, studies indicated that 61% of Brazilian territory had preserved native vegetation, while agriculture occupied 8% and pastures 19.7%. In 2014, the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics, IBGE, 
recorded 3,299 species threatened with extinction in Brazil. In 2010, Brazil had a population of 190,755,799 inhabitants, with a density of 22.43 inhabitants per square kilometer. The distribution is marked by 84.36% of the population living in urban areas, with significant concentrations in the southeast, 80.3 million, northeast, 53.1 million, and south, 27.4 million, regions. The extensive central west and north regions, representing two-thirds of the territory, host only 30 million inhabitants. Between 1940 and 1970, the population grew due to a reduction in the mortality rate, while the birth rate experienced a slight decline. Life expectancy increased from 44 to 54 years in the 1940s, reaching 77 years in 2021. Population growth has decreased since 1960, falling from 3.04% per year, 1950 to 1960, to 1.05% in 2008. Projections indicate a negative growth rate of minus 0.29% by 2050, concluding the demographic transition. The largest urban agglomerations in Brazil in 2019, according to IBGE, were Sao Paulo, 21,656,301, Rio de Janeiro, 12,777,959, Belo Horizonte, 5,178,131. Recife, 4,056,323, and Brasilia, 4,012,896. There are also large concentrations in Campinas, Baixada Santista, São José dos Campos, and Sorocaba, all located in São Paulo. Most state capitals are the largest cities in their states, except for Vitoria, ES, and Florianópolis, SC. According to IBGE in the 2010 census, 47.1% of the population, approximately 90.6 million, identified as white, 43.42%, about 82.8 million, as mixed race, pardo, 7.52%, approximately 14.4 million, as black, 1.1%, around 2.1 million, as yellow, and 0.43%, approximately 821,000, as indigenous, while 0.02%, about 36,100, did not declare their race. In 2007, Fune reported 67 isolated indigenous tribes, primarily in the Amazon, making Brazil possibly the country with the most isolated peoples in the world. The Brazilian population has indigenous, Portuguese, European, and African ancestry, with many unions among these groups since 1500. The mixed-race population includes caboclos, white and indigenous, mulattoes, white and black, and cafuzos, black and indigenous. Mixed-race individuals and mulattoes predominantly reside in the north, northeast, and central-west regions, with specific concentrations along the eastern coast of the northeast region, northern Maranjo, southern Minas Gerais, and eastern Rio de Janeiro. In the 19th century, Brazil received about 5 million immigrants from over 60 countries, mainly from Portugal, Italy, Spain, Germany, Japan, and the Middle East, between 1808 and 1972. The Constitution guarantees religious freedom, prohibiting intolerance, and establishes the separation between church and state, making Brazil a secular country. In 2010, the proportion of Catholics decreased from 73.6% to 64.6%, still representing the majority, 42.4% more than Protestantism. In Rio de Janeiro, the lowest proportion is 45.8%, while in Piauí it is 85.1%. Evangelicals are more present in Rondônia, 33.8%, and less so in Piauí, 9.7%. In 2009, an agreement with the Vatican recognized the legal status of the Catholic Church in Brazil, addressing norms already practiced regarding religious education in public schools, marriage, and spiritual assistance in prisons and hospitals. This project generated criticism regarding the secular state. Brazil has Portuguese as its official language, spoken by almost the entire population and predominant in media, 
business, and administration. Brazilian Portuguese differs slightly from European Portuguese, especially in phonology, due to influences from indigenous, African, and European languages. The CPLP standardized spelling in 2008, aiming to reduce differences between the variants, with a deadline for adaptation until 2016. In addition to Portuguese, there are several minority languages in Brazil. The 2010 census recorded 305 indigenous ethnicities speaking 274 languages, with 37.4% of indigenous people aged 5 and older speaking an indigenous language and 76.9% speaking Portuguese. German and Italian communities in the southern part of the country preserve their languages, co-officializing them in some municipalities. Examples include São Gabriel de Cacoera, which co-officializes indigenous languages, and municipalities like Santa Maria de Jetaba and Pomerode, which co-officialize German and Pomeranian. Additionally, states like Santa Catarina and Rio Grande do Sul recognize Talian as a linguistic heritage, while Esirado Santo has recognized Pomeranian and German as cultural heritages. Brazil's political organization is federal, comprising the Union, states, the federal district, and municipalities, all of which are autonomous. Five fundamental principles govern the federation, sovereignty, citizenship, human dignity, social values of labor and free enterprise, and political pluralism. The executive and legislative branches are independent at all levels, while the judiciary operates at the federal, state, and federal district levels. The executive and legislative branches are directly elected, with mandatory voting for literate individuals aged 18 to 70. The Democratic Republic has a presidential system, with a four-year term and the possibility of re-election. The National Congress is bicameral, consisting of the Chamber of Deputies and the Federal Senate. The judiciary performs jurisdictional functions. The major political parties include MDB, PT, PSDB, PP, PDT, UNI with tilde O, PTB, PL, PSB, Republicanos, CDN, and PSC. Brazilian law, rooted in the tradition of the civil code of the Roman Germanic system, emphasizes civil law concepts over common practices. Although legislation is predominantly codified, uncodified laws play a complementary role. Court decisions and explanatory guidelines generally do not bind specific cases, except in certain situations. The Federal Constitution of 1988 is the fundamental law of Brazil, guiding all legislation and judicial decisions. States have their own constitutions aligned with the federal one, while municipalities and the federal district have organic laws. Legislative bodies are the primary source of laws, although the judiciary and executive branches can enact regulations on specific issues. The judiciary, particularly the Supreme Federal Court, administers jurisdiction, including specialized instances. However, the slowness of final decisions has been criticized, with legal appeals taking several years and, in some cases, more than a decade to resolve. The Brazilian Constitution, in Article 144, establishes eight institutions for the enforcement of public security laws, including the Federal Police, Federal Highway Police, Federal Railroad Police, Federal Penal Police, Military Police, Civil Police, and State Penal Police, as well as Municipal Guards. These institutions are the responsibility of the federal, state, or municipal executive branches. There are also institutions within the federal legislative and judicial branches, such as the Legislative Police Department and the Federal Senate Police, as well as the Judicial Police of the Supreme Federal Court. The National Public Security Force operates in public disturbances with the approval of governors. In serious situations, the President may authorize the use of the Armed Forces for Law and Order Guarantee GLO. Brazil faces high rates of violent crime, with homicide rates above the global average. In 2020, Sao Paulo had a rate of 6.62 homicides per 100,000 inhabitants, while Serra reached 43.37. The national average was 19.89 per 100,000 inhabitants. The country also has the fourth largest prison population in the world, with over 600,000 inmates, 
resulting in a deficit of more than 200,000 prison spaces. The Brazilian Armed Forces, comprising the Army, Navy, and Air Force, are the largest military force in Latin America and the second largest on the continent. Brazil is considered the ninth largest military power globally in 2021. The state military police and military fire departments, although auxiliary to the army, are under state control. The army leads land operations, with approximately 334,500 soldiers and the largest fleet of armored vehicles in South America. The Brazilian Air Force, the largest in the Southern Hemisphere, operates around 627 aircraft, making it the second largest in the Americas. The Navy, being the oldest, protects territorial waters with a focus on the Marine Corps and the Combat Divers Group, which specializes in securing oil platforms. Despite social and economic challenges that limit its global power, Brazil stands out as a political and economic leader in Latin America, although it faces challenges, particularly from Argentina and Mexico, regarding its pursuit of a permanent seat on the UN Security Council. From World War II until the 1990s, Brazil sought to expand its global influence with an independent foreign policy. Today, it focuses on strengthening ties in South America, adopting multilateral diplomacy through the United Nations and the Organization of American States. The current foreign policy is based on regional positioning, leadership among developing countries, such as the BRICS, and emerging as a global superpower. Brazil advocates for multilateralism, peaceful conflict resolution, and non-intervention in foreign affairs, as stated in its constitution, which also encourages integration with Latin American nations through organizations like Mercosur and CELAC. Brazil is a federation composed of 26 states, the federal district, and 5,571 municipalities. States and municipalities are autonomous entities, possessing self-government, self-legislation, and self-collection. Politically and administratively, the country has 26 states and one federal district. Each state has an elected governor serving a four-year term and legislative assemblies. The judiciary is exercised by state courts. The federal district, which has no subdivisions into municipalities, possesses characteristics common to both states and municipalities. The municipalities, the smallest autonomous units, have their own organic laws limited by the federal constitution. With a total of 5,571 municipalities, they vary in size from Sao Paulo, with over 12 million inhabitants, to municipalities with fewer than 20,000. Some municipalities have areas larger than states or even countries, such as Altamira in Para, which spans nearly 160,000 square kilometers, making it larger than Portugal and 10 Brazilian states. Brazil, the largest economy in Latin America and the third largest in the Americas, ranks 13th in nominal GDP worldwide and 8th in purchasing power parity. With a mixed capitalist economy and vast natural resources, it is projected to become one of the five largest economies in the world in the coming decades. Active in sectors such as mining, manufacturing, agriculture, and services, Brazil has a workforce of over 120 million, making it the sixth largest globally, with an unemployment rate of 11.7%. Brazil participates actively in international financial and commodity markets as a member of BRICS and stands out as the world's largest coffee producer and the fourth largest automotive market. Its exports include soybeans, oil, iron ore, and cellulose, among others. Brazil is part of economic blocs such as Mercosur and G20, with its economy accounting for three-fifths of South America's industrial production. Agriculture represents 23% of GDP, making Brazil the third-largest exporter of agricultural products. Sectors like automobiles, steel, petrochemicals, and communications make up 30.8% of industrial GDP. Major Brazilian companies include Petrobras, Vale, Embraer, and Globo. However, corruption costs about $41 billion per year, posing a challenge to global engagement. Despite improvements, the country still faces issues such as the Brazil cost and is classified as one of the most closed economies in the world. Tourism is vital to the economy, with Brazil being a global highlight. 
In 2013, it received 6 million foreign tourists, leading in South America. Revenues reached $5.9 billion in 2010, recovering from the 2008 to 2009 crisis. In 2011, it achieved 5.4 million visitors and $6.775 billion in revenues. Lonely Planet ranked it as the best global tourist destination in 2014. Popular destinations include the Amazon Rainforest, Northeastern Beaches, the Pantanal, Iguazu Falls, beaches in Rio de Janeiro and Santa Catarina, tourism in Minas Gerais, and business in Sao Paulo. In 2015, Brazil ranked 28th among 141 countries in the Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index. Argentina, the USA, and Uruguay led international arrivals in 2011. Domestic tourism, with 51 million trips in 2005, is crucial. The Constitution and the Law of Guidelines and Bases of Education establish that the Union, States, the Federal District, and municipalities must manage their education systems, allocating 25% of the state budget and 18% of taxes for education. According to the PNAD in 2013, 8.3% of the population was still illiterate, and 17.8% were functionally illiterate. The Brazilian educational system faces challenges, with low results in the 2012 PISA assessments. Higher education offers options for undergraduate and graduate studies, with access through the ENAM exam, which evaluates high school education and serves as a gateway to public universities via SISU. In 2012, about 11.3% of the population had higher education. Brazil also stands out with eight of the ten best universities in Latin America in 2014. The SUS, the largest public health system in the world, is managed by all levels of government, while private health plays a complementary role. Public services are universal and free, funded by about 9% of GDP. In 2009, there were 1.72 doctors and 2.4 hospital beds per thousand inhabitants. Despite advancements since 1988, challenges persist, such as high infant mortality rates, 2.51%, and maternal mortality rates, 73.1 per thousand births. Non-communicable diseases, such as cardiovascular diseases, 151.7 per 100,000 inhabitants, and cancer, 72.7 per 100,000, impact health outcomes. Avoidable factors, such as accidents and violence, accounted for 14.9% of deaths in 2006. The health system was ranked 125th by the WHO in 2000. Brazil is the 10th largest energy consumer globally, standing out as the third largest in the Western Hemisphere, after the USA and Canada. Its energy matrix is led by renewable sources such as hydropower and ethanol, along with oil, natural gas, and solar energy. Hydropower accounts for 60.2% of the installed capacity of 181.5,000 MW as of December 2021. Wind energy contributes 11.6%, biomass 8.7%, and solar energy 7.2%. Nuclear energy represents about 3%. With significant oil discoveries in the Santos Basin, Brazil ranked 8th in the world in 2020. The country seeks alternatives to gasoline, such as the ProAlcool program based on sugarcane, promoting flexible fuel vehicles. Brazil serves as a reference for countries like India and China, while Japan and Sweden import Brazilian ethanol to meet environmental goals. With an extensive road network of 1.72 million kilometers, including 213,453 kilometers paved and 14,200 kilometers of dual carriageway, roads dominate the transportation of cargo and passengers in Brazil. The country ranks seventh in the automotive industry. With around 4,000 airports, the second largest number globally, Sao Paulo's Guarulhos International Airport stands out as the largest in Brazil connecting the city to various global destinations. In 2019, Brazil had 37 international airports and 2,464 regional ones. The Brazilian railway network, the 10th largest in the world, spans 31,299 kilometers. 
the government encourages rail transport, highlighting projects such as the Rio Sao Paulo high-speed train and the North-South Railway. With 37 major ports, the Port of Santos is the busiest in Latin America and ranks 39th in the world for container movement. Brazil also has 50,000 kilometers of waterways, such as the Tipurana Waterway. Technological research in Brazil is led by institutions such as the Oswaldo Cruz Institute, Butantan Institute, the Aerospace Technology Command, Embrapa, and INPE. The country has an advanced space program, manufacturing satellites and participating in the International Space Station. In 2006, Lt. Col. Marcos Pontes became the first Brazilian astronaut. Brazil is a pioneer in deep-water oil research, with plans for a nuclear submarine. Notable projects include the Nuclear Fuel Factory and the Synchrotron Laboratory, focusing on physics, chemistry, material science, and biology. The country has maintained the Commandante Ferez Station in Antarctica since 1984 and has been part of the elite group of the International Mathematical Union since 2018. According to the Global Information Technology Report 2009-2010 by the World Economic Forum, Brazil ranks as the 61st largest developer of information technology. Brazilian press began in 1808 with the establishment of the Royal Press in Rio de Janeiro. The Gazeta do Rio de Janeiro, on September 10, 1808, was the first newspaper in the country. Today, major newspapers such as Folha de S. Paulo, O Globo, and Estado de S. Paulo, along with publishers Abril and Globo, are prominent. Broadcasting started on September 7, 1922, with the first transmission occurring on April 20, 1923, by Radio Sociedade do Rio de Janeiro. Television officially began on September 18, 1950, with TV Tupi. Networks like Globo, Record, SBT, Bandeirantes, and Reed TV stand out, with television being an important factor in Brazilian popular culture. Digital television started in 2007. The Internet arrived in Brazil in 1988, but it wasn't until 1996 that it had its own backbones, marking the development of the telecommunications network in Brazil. The Brazilian cultural core has roots in Portuguese culture due to ties with the colonial empire. In addition to the language and Catholicism, colonial architecture also reflects this influence. However, the culture is widely diverse, strongly absorbing African, indigenous, and non-Portuguese European traditions. Significant contributions also came from Italian, German, and other European immigrants, especially in the South and Southeast regions. Indigenous peoples have influenced language and cuisine, while Africans have left their mark on various aspects such as language, cuisine, music, dance, and religion. Brazilian architecture, heavily influenced by Portugal, has its roots in Portuguese colonial architecture, which shaped the following centuries. In the 19th century, Brazil adopted European styles such as Neoclassicism and Neo-Gothic. In the 20th century, particularly in Brasilia, modernist architecture, envisioned by Oscar Niemeyer, marked a new phase. The unique blend of European styles and Brazilian influences characterizes national architecture. The Brazilian film industry began in the late 19th century during the Belle Epoque. Although it started producing films in the early 20th century, the city of Rio de Janeiro often served as a backdrop for American productions, such as Rio, O Magnifico, which aimed to promote tourism. In the 1960s, the Cinema Novo movement, led by Glauber Rocha and other directors, made its mark with influential works like Deus e o Diabo na Terra do Sol, 1964, and Terra and Trance, 1967. The 1990s saw successes such as O Quatrilho, 1995, O K A Isso, Campanheiro, 1997, and Central do Brasil, 1998, all of which received Oscar nominations. In 2002, Cidade de Deus, directed by Fernando Meirelles, received critical acclaim and four Oscar nominations. Major film festivals in Brazil include the international festivals in Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro, as well as national festivals such as those in Brasilia, Tiradentes, Recife, and the Gramadu Festival in Rio Grande do Sul.
Brazilian painting, which began in the late 16th century, has undergone various artistic influences, including Baroque, Rococo, Neoclassicism, Romanticism, Realism, Modernism, Expressionism, Surrealism, Cubism, and Abstractionism. This diversity resulted in Brazilian academic art. In 1816, the French artistic mission introduced the Imperial Academy of Fine Arts, bringing 19th century movements to Brazil. The Modern Art Week of 1922 broke with academic tradition, inaugurating a nationalist and modernist era. Notable painters include Ricardo du Pilar, Victor Meirelles, Anita Malfatti, Tarsila du Amaral, and Candido Portinari. Brazilian music encompasses various regional styles influenced by African, European, and indigenous forms, including Brazilian popular music, samba, coro, axe, foro, Brazilian funk, bossa nova, and Brazilian rock, among others. It originated from the fusion of European and African elements brought by Portuguese colonizers and enslaved people up until the 19th century. Brazilian classical music gained prominence with Villa Lobos in the 20th century. The rhythmic diversity of African music played a crucial role in popular and folk music, while indigenous influence was more limited. With a strong black presence, Brazilian popular music developed a distinctly Brazilian sound since the late 18th century. Brazilian literature originated with the Jesuits in the 16th century. Baroque flourished in the Northeast during the 16th and 17th centuries, while Arcadism expanded in the 18th century in Minas Gerais. In the 19th century, Romanticism, led by José de Alencar, marked a significant period in literature. Realism later gained prominence with Machado de Assis, considered Brazil's greatest writer. Initially linked to metropolitan literature, literary independence grew, culminating in the modern art week of 1922. Modernism brought forth independent writers such as Manuel Bandeira, Carlos Drummond de Andrade, Guimarães Rosa, João Cabral de Melo Neto, Clarice Lispector, and Cecilia Meyerless. Brazilian cuisine is a fusion of regional influences, resulting from the mixture of native populations and immigrants. From this union emerged emblematic dishes such as feijota, considered the national dish, and regional delicacies like gaucho barbecue, beiju, feijão tropeiro, batapa, maquica, polenta, pau de queijo, and acreage. Ingredients such as cassava, guarana, acai, cumaru, and takaka were introduced by indigenous peoples. European immigrants, primarily from Portugal, Italy, Spain, Germany, Poland, and Switzerland, brought new flavors by introducing wine, vegetables, and dairy products. African slaves also left their mark on the cuisine, especially in coastal states. Brazilian culinary diversity has also been enriched by Japanese immigrants who introduced foods associated with Asian cuisine. Additionally, Brazil is known for a variety of sweets such as Brigadeiro, Bijinho, and Bioelo de Rolo. Coffee and cachaca, distilled from sugarcane and the base for caipirinha, are icons on the Brazilian table. Football is the most popular sport in Brazil, with the Brazilian national team victorious in five editions of the FIFA World Cup. In addition to football, volleyball, table tennis, swimming, futsal, capoeira, skateboarding, surfing, judo, and athletics are also widely practiced in the country. Brazil has contributed variations of sports such as beach soccer, futsal, foot tennis, sack football, and foot volley. In martial arts, capoeira, veltudo, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu stand out. In motorsports, Brazilian drivers have won the Formula One World Championship title eight times. The country has hosted notable sporting events such as the World Cups in 1950 and 2014, the Pan American Games in 2007, and the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Don't miss the chance to be part of our community. If you enjoy our content, watch our videos. Share your opinions and suggestions in the comments, like to show your support, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Together, we can grow and bring even more amazing content to you. Let's do this. Every interaction you have makes a difference.